Willie Epting Jr. Shake Back Sports Show right here on the Big Game Christian Sports Network. Man, we got a lot to get into in this show as usual. But before we go any further, and I bring on my brothers, before we go any further in this show, the first segment, it is being brought to you by Amazon or Amazing Amazon. BGC Big Deals just became Amazon introducing or just became amazing, introducing amazing Amazon deals with amazing savings virtually on everything, everything, mama. Just go to bgcsports.net and click on the Amazon or the amazing Amazon deals page and absolutely take advantage of the deals being offered by Amazon from the station that might need to change its name to amazing. We are the BGC Sports Network. Once again, Willie F.T. Jr. Shakeback Sports Show, BGC Sports Network. I got my brothers on the line with me behind door number one. I have known this man for over 20 years. He is my brother from another mother. Corey Ellison. Corey, what's good, man? What's up, my brother, man? Happy to be here. Blessed to see you another day. Absolutely. And coming behind door number two, shoulders, shoulder pads on, helmet on, chin strap buckled, none other than Mark Quest and Huff. Quest, what's up, bro? What's up? What's up? Happy to be back. Man, I appreciate y'all being on the show once again. For all you guys out there watching Facebook Live, um, this is going to be a project that is going to be uh, going forward to new heights with these two brothers. Shout out to uh, Michael James Hamilton the second. He was not able to be with this on this episode, but we will hope to have him on real soon. All right, fellas, man, we got a lot to get in. Got a lot to get into. Y'all ready? Yes, I mean, sir. Oh, born that way. <laughs> well, here we go. Let's get it then. So. Um, the last dance, and just in case you guys out there have been under a rock or so socially distanced that you don't know what the last dance is about, that was the documentary uh, that actually followed around the Chicago Bulls, their last championship season, 97-98, and it, it brought back some memories for me. I hated that team, but that's another story for another day. Um, but I wanted to bring on the fellas and get their uh, get their thoughts on the last dance, man. Um, Corey, we're going to start with you. Do you think that this documentary unfairly depicted Horace Grant and his role with these championships? 100%. Absolutely, yes, I do. I think he was unfairly depicted, man, and I'm going to tell you why. Number one, this is one of your teammates, man, that helped you with one of the three championships that you got. He won three championships with MJ. And if there are some differences or if you feel like there's some stuff not right between you and teammates, that stuff you're supposed to handle as a human one-on-one -on -one between each other, man. You're not supposed to put that stuff out on national TV and put them on front street like that. That's violating the G code to me, man. That's, that's, that's the sanctity of the locker room. You don't, you don't do that. And what I found most interesting about that was when Horace Grant came out and said that uh, he was not able to uh, get anything to eat if they had a bad game or if he had a bad game or whatnot. I just found that to be a little bit out of control. I know, you know, we all know the, the extent of which Michael Jordan and his competitive spirit and where he took him and all of that. But that's just that's just obscene for that to take place, especially for two men that are grown men. Um, and I just thought that that was uh, I thought that was very unfair. And, you know, I got some other thoughts about the last dance before I get, before we get into that anymore. Um, Quest, step up to the microphone, big homie. Um, question for you. If Michael Jordan would not have retired after the 93 championship series on a scale of one to 10, with 10 being the greatest prob probability, how many or do you think they actually would have won or put on a scale? the amount, uh, if, they, if you think they would have won, won eight championships in a row instead of the six and eight years? I know what I'm about to say is probably going to sound a little bit crazy to a lot of people, but you got to understand how hard it is to continue to make it that far in the finals, playing all, all those playoff games year after year. Your body, you know, you got to deal with a shorter rest time. And I'm just going to go out and just say, I, probability, I'd probably say a two. Like, I think that's probably impossible. Like, I mean, the most was someone won was three. And, I mean, it was Jordan, and I think the Lakers a long time ago. Like, 
it's it's almost impossible for you to continue to win championships over and over again just because of the toll that it puts on your body. Like, you know, these these are amazing top flight athletes that we're dealing with. But, I mean, only man I know that probably can do that year after year after year is Jesus. <laughs> Ain't no probably to it, man. Jesus can do He's what? He's undefeated. <laughs> yeah, he, he can do what he wants, when he wants, how he wants, and, and whenever he wants to do it. But, you know, I tend to agree with you, and people seem to have the idea that especially back then, um, I don't know how the generation now that is in the in the sphere of watching LeBron James does everything that he does. But when Michael Jordan was at his peak, when he was at his his airiness, uh, he I, I, I could see that team and just how it was constructed and the way that Phil Jackson led those guys. And the only thing that I, I think that could have stopped them. Because Hakeem Olajuwon and Clyde Drexler was not going to stop uh, Jordan and Pippen and, and, and Rodman. And, 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 and then they won two championships in a row. The Knicks weren't going to stop them because they had been killing the Knicks up until that point anyway. But the only thing that I could say that would have stopped them would have been some sort of injury. And then, you know, I wanted to ask you all about this too, man. I didn't put this on the script. Corey, tell me about what you think how Scottie Pippen and the fact that his contract was uh was really peanuts in comparison to what other people were making with his skill set and for the contributions that he gave to that team at that time. You know, he was like the the seventh highest paid player on that squad and he signed the contract. So I you know he, and he got mad about it and then of course he didn't have the surgery until the summer. He tried to back the he tried to back the bulls into a corner and, and really create leverage that he didn't have. What's your, what, what, are your, what are your thoughts about that, Corey? Man, as far as that, I kinda it is his fault because at the end of the day, he is the one that has to sign the contract. He agreed to it. But I can also see where he's coming from. You know, growing up where he was raised, poor, all them kids, um, handicapped, dad handicapped. He just wanted money, man. He wanted to help his family as much as he could. It's, it's about to grind and being able to get his, his family out. So he wasn't thinking long term he was thinking right then and the now this is going to help my family and help me do what i need to do but in the long term they should have stepped up and gave him more money man like being the the seventh highest paid player on that team and you the second producer the bat to robin to to jordan no man come on you gotta do better than that quest your thoughts on that uh, for me, I, I, I think about it in terms of being an athlete. Like, you know what your worth is. You know what your abilities is. You know what you can do. Like, um, during that era, Scottie Pippen, he's probably one of the top five players in the NBA during that time. And at that time, you got to understand your worth and what you can do for the Bulls team and what you can also do for the other teams in the league. And I think that was a time where he should have took a chance and bet it on himself. I understand completely what Corey's saying where, you know, you got a handicapped father, a handicapped brother, you know, you just want the money right now. But if you were to just say, hey, I am I'm, I know my work. I'm going to sit this one out or I'm just going to wait to the next contract and just see what I can get. I feel like, you know, Scottie Pippen's career could have been a lot different and maybe his money, money uh, financial situation could have been a lot better because he definitely deserved a lot more than what he had. Yeah, and, and you talk about taking a chance and gambling on yourself. That sounds a little bit familiar for us. Mm here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, uh, the quarterback for quote-unquote America's team. We're going to get into that in the third segment, so y'all make sure y'all stay tuned to that. Once again, I got Mark Quest and Huff on the line with me as well as Corey Ellison, courtesy of the BGC Sports Fork Talk Eatery Sports Hotline where the food is hashtag fork and delicious, and we are chopping it up about the last dance. And uh, we got about six minutes left to go or five and a half minutes left to go in this first segment. So we're going to round out the segment, continue to, la- to talk about the last dance, um, and here's my here's my question to both of y'all, and I'm gonna let Quest handle this one first. After watching the Last Dance, would you say that Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player, not ever, but that you've ever seen? And there's a difference between the two. Uh, for me, I'm, I'm gonna have to disagree, and the reason why I disagree is because I mean, once once you actually watch the documentary, documentary, you you start to see what all Jordan had, like he had a whole team behind him. Like far as he had a great coaching staff, he had great teammates and he had a great front office. His GM, I mean, run executive year. 
I'm not sure how many times, but I know he won it a couple of different times. He had Phil Jackson, who's arguably the greatest basketball coach of all time. He has uh, what some people consider one of the best basketball players in Scottie Pippen, the greatest rebound in all time. And, and Dennis Rodman, you had great supporting cast. And a lot of people forget how good Ron Harper was at the beginning of his career before he actually got injured. This is a guy that was averaging 20-plus points a game. I mean, and those people that are just role players for you. And you, 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 you on top of that, you – you add a person that is great as the scorer as Michael Jordan was. I mean, to me, I see players that's in the game today that I that I really like. I mean, I, I figure yeah, everybody know where I'm going with this. I, I like LeBron James. I, I see what he do with the small supporting cast that he do, and I I know what he can do. But with that being said, I do I would say I do think Jordan was maybe the greatest scorer of all time. All right, Corey, because I know you got <laughs> I know you got something to say about that. We got three minutes left to go or, or four minutes left to go in this first segment. So the floor is yours, my brother. And before I get into that, there's something else I want to say. You know, Jordan <laughs> called out Horace Grant and called him a snitch. Honestly, to me, Jordan was a snitch going on the last dance, talking about his teammates going into their room and seeing them uh, snort coke and smoking <laughs> weed and having all type of women in the room. No, that's a snitch, brother. That's a snitch. <laughs> but, okay. Okay, okay, get but, back to the question at hand, please. <laughs> but but as far as Jordan, uh, I do feel he is, man. And the reason I say that, man, is this brother just had a different attitude. Um, he found a way to take everything personal against his opponents. No matter how big or small it was, he going to find something to propel himself in them games. Uh, never lost. I mean, never lost, man. And in that and in that time of playing, you went in there and you got beat up, man. You you getting clotheslined. And he never shot away from that. He never feared that. In the game's biggest moments, he took over. Like like you said, LeBron. I love LeBron. But to me, LeBron kind of takes a back seat in the big moments sometimes. And that's the difference, the mentality to me. To me, the most Comparable player to Jordan to me is it was Kobe. They had the same mentality, man. They they coming out to kill you. Whatever little edge they gotta find to get you, that's what they're gonna do. So yes, I do agree he is. Yeah, and I I I'm I, I can make the argument for either one. And due to the fact that I phrased the question, and I think people need to understand that. Being the greatest player that you've ever seen, yeah. as opposed to the greatest player of all time, yeah. I talked about this on my on on a couple of shows ago. I can't say that John Havlicek was the best point guard that I've ever yeah. saw, that ever because I've never saw him play. Yeah, I can't say that Bill Russell was the greatest. Now I know he, I I can see his resume and I see what his accolades are, but for me, it's the eye test, as I'm sure it is for everybody else that's that's a true NBA sports fan or a basketball fan in general. And what I say to that is I, I, I'm going to break the tie. I'm going to break the tie. And I love LeBron. Don't get me wrong. I, I, he, to me, he is more com- uh, closely compared to Mike or, uh, Magic Johnson than rather than any other of those other great players. And Magic has five rings. And he had, and I understand he had Kareem, he had Worthy, he had Byron Scott. He had all those great players with him. LeBron James, he single-handedly carried that Cleveland Cavs team in the 07 finals to the finals against the Spurs in which they got swept. But Michael Jordan is just a this dude is just otherworldly. And to me, what makes him the greatest that I've ever seen is not so much what he did on the court, but it's his killer instinct, like Corey said, the way that he uh the way he wanted to just kill you. You know, the way – because I remember we got 20 seconds left to go in the segment, and I'm going to wrap it up. Um, I remember in the documentary where he said that he was being compared to Clyde Drexler, and he hated that. And why not? Clyde had a nickname. Jordan had a nickname. Jordan was 6'6". Clyde was 6'7". They both could jump out the gym, very athletic. So it, it, with, that, with that being said, I'm going to have to break the tie and say that Michael Jordan is the greatest – basketball player that I have ever seen in my life. All right, that's going to wrap it up for the first segment here on the Shakeback Sports Show right here on the Big Game Christian Sports Network. 
Come on back on the other side of the break, man. We're going to get into some last pieces of the last dance. Then we're going to talk some NFL right here on the Big Game Christian Sports Network. Mark Weston Huff, Corey Ellison, Willie Epting Jr. All right, hold on, y'all. Good stuff, man. It was. They say that it is best to surround yourself with people on the same mission as yourself. And that is what I have done. Willie Epting Jr., Shake Back Sports Show right here on the Big Game Christian Sports Network. Man, we got a lot to get. All right, that sounds good, man. That sounds yeah. really, really good. Did y'all hear it? Yeah, yeah, I did. All right, let me uh, save it. Uh, How do I save it? I, I, I act like I ain't never done this before. There we go. So, Corey. Yep. So, when you say comparable, you mean the closest as far as greatness, or are you just saying playing style? That Kobe mentality. Style. The mentality. That, that killer instinct mentality. I agree, I agree with that. But reason why I'm like, reason why I just can't really just get with it because that killer instinct is like what Phil Jackson did to make Jordan so great was he took him off the ball. He, he made him be more of a team player instead of just having that straight killer instinct. And for me, like that killer instinct, sometimes it can be it can be really good to be a killer. So, like you see how Russell uh, – Westbrook, he has his game where he go out there killing mindset, I want to kill, kill, kill. But then he had them games where I want to kill, 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 and I'm out here shooting four for 25. <laughs> yeah, but that ain't Jordan, though. Huh? Oh, yeah, Jordan, but that ain't Jordan. But Jordan, he, like, he going he gonna to shoot his way through it. I Like, me personally, I guess it just comes to preference because I, I want to play where, like, okay, well, I'm not shooting good, but guess what? I'm going to dictate the whole tempo of the game. I'm going to dictate how the game is played. I'm going to dictate – where, where this defense is going to move to, I'm going to put everybody in position to make plays. And I feel like the sabri- the, sub- <clears throat> the, the, the minds, like your mind is a better tool than your body sometimes. You see what I'm saying? I agree. And that's, that's why I put LeBron over Jordan because I feel like LeBron, he thinks the game more than Jordan do. And I feel like everything Jordan do, LeBron can do. And, but he's a better teammate. He's a, he, like he can get the best out of his teammates without belittling them. You know what I mean? That's. Well, I don't know if he can do everything he can do though. I, I don't know well, if that, Jordan didn't lose no championships. I, I don't know if that's necessarily a question because 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 we didn't know about this stuff until this came out. So we don't know what LeBron is doing. Doing. You remember what happened in, against the Warriors at the end of Game One when that dude <laughs> didn't know what score it was. J.R. Smith, yeah, do you think that he just let that slide? Yeah, that's what we saw in person, but that's not what we saw behind closed doors, and that's what this last dance is doing. All right, man, so we're going to – um, let me uh do this real quick because I, I won't – oh. I'm yeah, tripping. the same thing, man. I can't wait in 15 to 20 years to uh, LeBron bring his out because you know he's going to have one too. Oh, yeah, no doubt. I agree. And then Kobe has one coming out too. Yeah, we already know what Kobe's gonna be about. It's gonna be about And Tom Brady got one coming out too <laughs> next year. Who cares? Uh, I know, right? I, I've been on the same field as Tom Brady. I've seen Tom Brady get on somebody for real. I've seen Tom Brady come out the referees. Yeah. Touchdown, making baby, making Tom Brady. Yeah. All right, gentlemen. Here we go. This is gonna be 18 minutes. The second segment. Let me pull. I got the read right here. Uh. uh So when we come back, we're going to just dig back into the last dance. I gave us one minute a piece to just <laughs> summarize what, what you guys thought of the last dance. And if it, uh, I mean, and any other comments that you want to make, but you just got to keep it at one minute or less. Gotcha. All right. Hey, somebody call me. Go ahead. You need to get it? No, I'm here. Because it's going to knock you out. I'm All here. Right. All right. And we welcome you back to the Shake Back Sports Show right here on the Big Game Christian Sports Network. To the dopest engineer on the globe, Big Day. What's going on, sports fans all around the rock? What is going on? Got my brothers with me, Mark Question Huff, Corey Ellis, in case you missed it in the first segment. We discussed the last dance. We're going to get actually a little bit more into that here in the first part of the second segment. Before we move on any further, this second segment is being br- brought to you by the over... Uh, <laughs> The O-U-S-D, or S-C, that's the, 
God, dog. Hold on, y'all. We're going to start off. <laughs> Cause we, hold on. I'm, I'm going to back it up because I can back it up. Uh, I think. Let's see. God, dog. Hold on, y'all. We're going to start off. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to save that. I'm going to save that. That's going to be a, a blooper. Yeah, you need to save bloopers when we mess up. I'm going to save a blooper. I'm going to save bloopers. I'll try to say celebro. Uh, How you say it? <laughs> oh, you, you was trying uh, to say, uh, 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 what was, I forgot what it was. <laughs> what did you just say? How you say it, Corey? Cerebral. Yeah, I'll try to say that. I kept messing up. I just said, uh, the mindset. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I got to say that, man. That was funny. Shake back blooper one. <laughs> And to be honest with you, read is way too long anyway, so I'm going to cut it down regardless. All right. All right. Coming down in three, two, and one. And we welcome you back to the Shake Back Sports Show right here on the Big Game Christian Sports Network. To the dopest engineer on the planet, Big Day. What's going on, sports fans all around the rock? What is happening? Got my brothers with me, Mark Questenhub, Corey Ellison. Fellas, what's up? What up? What's what up? good? So we just talked about The Last Dance, of course, the documentary that featured the Chicago Bulls, really Michael Jordan. But, uh, yeah, that was a resounding conversation. We're going to actually finish that up here uh, in the first part of this second segment, which is being brought to you by the Big Game Christian Sports Network. Now that the NFL draft is over, we just got to give it to you one more again. It's the overhyped, unofficial, and slightly censored 2020 NBA Draft Talk live from TJ's Catfish and Wings in Arlington, Texas, Thursday, 25th, June 25th at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Join us for some excellent draft talk from the place where it all started from. We will be live on Facebook once again and on the radio just go to bgcsports.net for more information. It is the overhyped, unofficial, and slightly censored 2020 NBA Draft Talk live from TJ's Catfish and Wings, streaming live on Facebook and on the radio. And just like this network, it is going to be lit. All right, fellas. So let's just wrap up the last dance, um, kind of final thoughts, if you will. Uh, Corey, give me in one minute or less. Your overall feelings about the documentary, the Chicago Bulls, those uh, six championships, and more importantly, Michael Jordan uh, as the player that he was. Man, I loved The Last Dance. Um, I think that it gave us a lot of insight as far as Michael Jordan and his mentality and things behind the scene. I honestly wish it would have went longer than what it did. I was fiending for more, want more. Um like I said, man, it, it was just it was just special to see that stuff. I'm glad that he decided to um, share that with sports fans, and especially during this pandemic, man, with no sports going on, and us just being hungry for something out there, and him allowing us to come out at this time. I just think it was special, man. And like I said, I wish we would have had more than what we had. Yeah, I, I agree with with a lot of those points. I'll get to that here in just a second. Quest, your final thoughts on the last dance. Um, I mean, I thought it was great. I, I couldn't ask for more. Like I'm like, Corey, I wanted to see more and more about it. I wish they had some about the, you know, the earlier championships, but for me, like, and show how great Jordan truly was, you know, like how good of a basketball player he was, but more importantly, it, it, it showed what it takes to be great. Like he didn't let up on anybody. He, he pressured the, the, the the front office he pressures the coaches like he want to win and you know you got to have that hunger and drive to be a champion and he had that and I loved I loved the way they uh they broke off the stories and they talked about some of the other players like the the segment they had about Dennis Rodman and what they had about Steve Kerr what they had about Scottie Pippen like I think that was amazing like even the, the part about uh, Phil Jackson no one knew about him you know being infatuated with Native Americans like that's that's very interesting stuff for, for me. But it, it, they did an amazing job the way they did. And I'm, I'm with you. Like, during the pandemic, you couldn't ask for a better time to have it. You actually got to sit down and really lock into it and learn a lot about the game of basketball and, you know, one of the greatest players of all time, which was amazing. 
Yeah, and, and I agree with those points as well. Um, what I like most about it is seeing him get knocked on his behind again by my Detroit Pistons in that um, that 88-89 season or that 88 oh, Lord. championship season, you know, the first time we went back to back. I I thoroughly enjoyed seeing that again, but I said this on the show last week. I said that after watching the documentary, I have a newfound respect. I shouldn't say a newfound respect. I can actually say that I respected Michael Jordan's game, and I would have never admitted that back then when I was a fan of the Pistons because when he got when they got beat down in the series before in eighty, I thought I want to say it was eighty eight. 87 88 that's when the pistons played the lakers um in the first uh, uh of the uh, nba finals and he came back like the next day and started working lifting weights all that other stuff so to me that is a true testament of a person knowing what their weaknesses are and then immediately addressing it so i, I found that to be pretty cool um and then with the pandemic you guys are right i think this thing was originally scheduled to air in june did y'all know that yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was originally scheduled to air in June. So, uh, you know, sh- props to ESPN, man, for recognizing that people are getting tired of watching the 2007 uh, Fiesta Bowl between Oklahoma and Boise State. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to move on, man, further in the show. We got about, oh, we got 13 minutes left to go in the segment, man. So time kind of flies when you're having fun. But we got to keep going with this NBA talk. And you're hearing different things every day about, the possibility of the game returning. Um, I heard a report on Thursday that there's a good chance that when it does come back, and notice I said when and not if, that when it does come back, there's going to be two venues that are going to probably be hosting the game. That's Las Vegas and Orlando, which I think is kind of hilarious. that There's no NBA team in Las Vegas, so why are you going there? But, you know, they're still thinking about the money behind it, I'm sure. So, I actually posted a, a, a poll on Twitter at Shakeback Sports um, last week, and it actually it basically asked three questions, and I want to get y'all's input on it. Should the season be canceled, or should it be one week's worth of regular season games and then start the playoffs, or then should it go straight to the playoffs when play finally does resume? Quest, what you think about those scenarios? Uh, I, I want to go with B. I like I like B because you know the one. We should give people a chance, you know, to get that jump shot, jump shot back, right? You know, get some, some, some conditioning going, get the running up, up and down the court. You know, basketball is not like some of these sports; it's a games or, or rhythms and and runs. And I think that that one week of the regular season play allows the people to get their legs up on them and you know get their jump shots back, right? Yeah, and and the the thing is that they're gonna have they're gonna have to have some semblance of a training camp because. I know Giannis Antetokounmpo hadn't picked up a basketball. Jason Tatum, uh, Jason Tatum hadn't picked up a basketball in, in several weeks. They may have done so since I first heard that, which was maybe a couple weeks ago. Um, but those guys, man, and, they, and now you see uh, the facility starting to open back up for individual training. I know the guy or the uh, player from Orlando, I can't think of his name, uh, but he was out there working out by himself. Corey, what are your thoughts on it? If, it was, if, the, if the NBA was to shut, should they shut down the season? Uh, one week's worth of regular season games and then the playoffs or go straight to the playoffs? Yeah, I would have to agree with uh, Marquez. I mean, I think uh, B is the right answer. Uh, I definitely don't think that they should shut the season down. Uh, these players have, you know, worked their butts off. They grind in the off season. Uh, they had preseason. They played the amount of games that they played. And then just to go and just cancel it, I don't think that's the right answer. Yes, there should be precautions taken. Uh, yes, uh, there should be guidelines in place to make sure that that people are um, healthy and um, that there's no, you know, spread or threat of a spread for additional virus. Uh, but but like you said, man, you got to give these players time to to get their bodies back, reacting to the way they move and cut and jump. Uh, not doing that, I think there will be a significant amount of injuries that if you don't. And the last thing we want to see is somebody tear their ACL or, or tear their um, Achilles or, or anything like that. So, so, yeah, I definitely think it should come back. I definitely think they need a week or two to, to, to get their body back right. And then let's get to the playoffs, man. Give, give the people what they want. Yeah, and that would actually put the, ser- or the season going into 
the end of July, which we, of course, have never seen that before. Um, that would be an interesting dynamic to the season with that itself. Uh, and I agree with both you guys. I think one week's worth of regular season games uh, and then go to the playoffs, like both of y'all said, it'll give uh, give the players an opportunity to to get back in the game shape somewhat and hopefully prevent injury. I know that the the biggest sticking point behind the entire thing coming back will be something to the effect of how are we going to uh, make sure that the, the that the virus – it's not among us. And if it is, what are we going to do at that point? Are we going to qu- have to quarantine that player? Are we going to have to quarantine the whole team? So there's still a lot of logistical issues that I think they, they're, they're still working on. Um, unlike in baseball, where they're going to be arguing about the money, make sure you tune into the hashtag Brothers of Baseball show right here on the Big Game Christmas Special Network with your boy Willie Epstein Jr., Monday through Friday, 12s and 6s. So, yeah, I, um, I, I definitely agree with you guys both. And, uh, you know, I, I, <laughs> I think it would be a waste uh, if they didn't try something. And I think they yeah. know that it would be a waste. And that's why they're uh, hammering out so many details to try to get that thing in place. All right, so so since we all agree that number two should happen, which is the w- one week's worth of regular season games and then to the playoffs, we know that the Lakers, uh, as of their last game, which they beat, they beat the Clippers at home, but really on the road, but not but at home too, since they share the same arena. And they had beat the Bucks that that same weekend, so they were they're still the number one seed out west. The Milwaukee Bucks, number one seed out east. If I said to you, Quest, you got to put down an uncomfortable amount of money that matters to you. Who is still who is your favorite coming out of the east? And the reason why I'm gonna say this, I'm really I really don't even want to say it. But it's the Bucks, and the reason why I say that because you know their star player, you know he's going to show up, he's going to be in shape, he's going to be ready to play. My other pick would be the Philadelphia 76ers. But the reason why I can't say that because you know Joel Embiid, he has a problem. He has a problem with staying in shape. He, he's be he be overweight. He got he's injury prone. So that's why I gotta say the Bucks. Uh, wait a minute. So you're saying either the Bucks or the Sixers? Or you're saying the Bucks is your number one, but you got you got a little hope for the Sixers. I'm saying this: if they play all through the season and the season never the COVID nineteen virus never happened, I would say the 76ers. Oh man! Oh. Uh, boo! <laughs> uh, I can feel that because I actually picked the uh, – I almost said 49ers. I, I almost picked the 76ers. Actually, I did pick the 76ers to go to the finals against the Lakers at the beginning of the season, um, and I thought Joel B was going to have a, a monster year. And, you know, for whatever reason, or we know the reasons, uh, it hasn't panned out the way that he thought. Okay, so what about the West? Uh, Lakers. Uh, and the reason why I say that, because the only competition I feel that – it was going to be real competition for the Lakers was the Clippers. But in the playoffs, it's a different basketball game. And when it comes to size and rebounding and their physical play, I just don't think the Clippers can match up. I mean, you're going to have to deal with Anthony Davis, JaVale McGee, and Dwight Howard. I'm not understanding where you're going to get your rebounds and, you know, your, your inside presence from. The, uh, the Clippers' best big man is Montrell's hair, Harold. And, I, I mean, at some point, like, you're going to have to get some production from someone else on the inside. Yeah, and and the Clippers, what they do have an advantage to me over the Lakers is is that they they are a complete team, way more complete team than the Lakers, and they got dogs on defense over there with with Beverly and Paul George is a is a dog himself on defense, and uh, with the with the with Sweet Lou coming off the bench, you know it, it's just it's crazy over there, um, Corey. So you you have the same you have the same scenario, the same dilemma. I got something on. I want you to put an uncomfortable amount of money on the table and tell me who the favorite is coming out of the East. Simple, man. It's the Bucks. Plain and simple. No nope. questions asked to me. He, he he said plain and simple. Quest. Uh, no, no. You don't even. We don't even need an explanation. But I'm gonna actually go, both. Both actually. But yes, the clip. I mean the Bucks. The Bucks. Okay, but I'm gonna tell you the reason why I think you need an explanation. Yeah, the Bucs were playing at a high level. Some of the best team defense that we've probably seen since those Celtics 
uh, back in 08, 09, in that, in that era. They're probably playing some of the best team defense since then. But this layoff, how is it going to affect their legs? Because playing defense takes way more energy than playing on offense. And they don't have the... They don't have the greatest shooters in the world over there. So they're going to have to really lock down to me on defense for it to be. Now, I'm not saying I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't disagree with you. I actually do agree with you that I think it's the Bucks, but I think it's a little bit, uh, I think it's a little bit closer than what people may think. All right. So out West, who you got out West? It's the Lakers, man. Um, I really want to go with the Clippers, but I just feel like them bringing in Anthony Davis, man, is, is going to make a real difference. Uh, the only thing that kind of sways me towards the Clippers is that bench. I mean, bench play plays a huge role when it comes to the playoffs. And if you got a deep bench that can produce, that 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 works wonders for your team, man. So I'm gonna give it to the Lakers, but the Clippers is like my one A. Yeah, and I, I agree with both you guys. Uh, but for the East, for me, I think you have to pay a little bit more attention to the defending world champions. I think you have to give them that respect. I see you shaking your head, Huff, and I don't care because I'm going to tell you (laughs) why. They've got probably the most improved player in the league for the second straight year. Pascal Siakam. And he's showing that he could be the man without Kawhi Leonard being there. They've got Kyle Lowry. He proved something last year. He proved that he could do it. They also have off the bench Fred Van Vliet. They also have uh, your boy from Oklahoma City, Serge Ibaka, who, you know, he's still a bit of a force. But this is the thing that I want you to realize is that that coach has done one of the most amazing jobs as a coach that I've seen in a long time. And I'm talking about Nick Nurse. And if he doesn't win, if if he doesn't win coach of the year or if he's not heavily considered for coach of the year, I'm going to scream conspiracy from the top of my lungs because uh, that guy up there has done a phenomenal job. And they actually – you know, they may not be as deep as the Bucks, but they can give them some problems on that on the offensive end. And in the West, I'm with you guys as well, man. The Lakers, I mean, I'm not saying that just because they're my favorite team, but when you have that dynamic duo, you got two superstars heading that 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 team with uh with Davis and, and LeBron and and Rondo. Uh he's he's look, when I look when when the Lakers came here and played the Mavs back in, I want to say it was back in March. I got two pictures of Ray, Rajon Rondo brushing his hair. <laughs> and, I, and I put them on Instagram and Twitter, but that has nothing to do with whether or not why I think they're going to win the West. The reason why I think they're going to win the West is because uh, the supporting cast is, is doing their thing, and LeBron James is, off, is on a mission. He's, he's, he's trying to get at least two more championships. He's got two more years on his deal in Los Angeles. So I agree with both you guys, but in the East – a little bit more slim margin than you guys have in the West. We all agree with. So we got about a minute and 15 seconds left to go in the second segment. Uh, got my boys with me, Mark Quest and Huff, Corey Ellison, courtesy of the BGC Sports Fork Talk Eatery Sports Hotline, where the food is hashtag forking delicious. If you haven't had any fork talk, man, you ain't lived. I'm telling you now. I know to cook personally. Um, but yeah, so we, let, let's wrap it up by saying, let, uh, give me, give me this, your top three MVP choice, MVP choices uh, in the NBA uh, should the season end uh, or whenever the season comes back and end. Who's your top three MVP candidates? Forty five seconds left to go in the segment. Quest, go ahead. Giannis, LeBron, Anthony Davis, Corey. Giannis, LeBron, and you know I got to give my boy some love. Luka Doncic's dog. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> he deserves it. He deserves to be in that talk because where and, and primarily he's doing what he's doing without the consistent play uh, or high level play from Chris Tapp. So I agree with both you guys there on all three of those choices. Come on back on the other side of the break. We're gonna talk some NFL on the Shake Back Sports Show right here on the Big Game Christian Sports Network. Mark Quest and Huff. Corey Ellison, the dopest engineer in the game, Big Day, Willie Epstein Jr. Y'all come on back on the other side of breaking hot letters. Good stuff, boy. Yeah. I was made for this, man. I just needed to learn how. I just needed to learn how to work. <laughs> All right, let me see how I sound. Come on back, and we welcome you back to the Shake Back Sports Show right here on the Big Game Christian Sports Network. 
to the dopest engineer on the planet, Big Day. What's going on? Sports fans all around the rock. What is happening? Got my brothers with me. Mark Questenhub, Corey Ellison. Fellas, what's up? What up? What's good. So we just talked oh, about The Last yeah. Dance, of course, the documentary that featured the sh- All right, that's a bet. Let's see. Why y'all laugh at the 76ers? Because they were struggling a little bit. Man, because they suck. He doesn't have the firepower. Yeah, yeah. they suck. They, I mean, I, I don't know. Man. I thought they would have done something at the deadline to get a shooter, but I, I didn't think the Bucks would have it, and I didn't think the Toronto Raptors would be where they are by any stretch of the imagination. So that's my feeling about that. I ain't going to lie to you. Uh, you said the Toronto Raptors. I don't think they got a chance, like, at all. I don't I don't think – I know for a fact they couldn't beat this, the Celtics in the seven-game series. And to be completely honest, like, I oh, hell, I feel like they're struggling with the Indiana Pacers, to be honest. <laughs> I think they're missing a piece that, that, that the Lakers got from them, Danny Green. That's That's a key factor. Danny Green is a, uh, is a very large role, but for me, I just like Pascal Siakam. Like he he's a great basketball player, but he, yeah, he's a slave. like you you need a, a star that can stretch the the court too. Because I mean, they just gonna pack the paint against you. Well, Cal Lowry, he, he's not gonna beat you. He's a game manager. Like he he control the tempo of the game. He's not no superstar in my eyes. Like he's a great point guard, but he's not no superstar. He's not gonna be a game changer. He's not gonna go out there and give you thirty points if you need it. Like and I feel like to to take a team over the top, you need that star. And I feel like in the playoffs, they're going to do just like how they did Giannis. Like, they're going to give you them jump shots and make him prove that you can be from the outside, pack the paint, and make you look at four shirts. When you got to take the goal with four shirts looking at you, it's a little bit harder to be a slasher. All right, let's go ahead and knock out this last 15 minutes, bruh. Um, Oh, shoot. Uh, I gotta go get one of the other reads. You know what? I just use Fork Talk. That's all. That's cool. All right, here we go. Coming down in three, two, and one. And we welcome you back to the Shake Back Sports Show right here on the Big Game Christian Sports Network. To the dopest engineer on the planet, Big Day, man, holding it down. Appreciate all your work that you do behind the scenes. Got my boys with me, Mark Question, Huff, Corey Ellison. We chopped it up about all things sports. Uh, last segment, we talked about um, <laughs> the NBA season. Finished up on the last dance. Corey, what's going on, man? You good? What's good, my brother? Yes, glad to be here. Quest, what's going on, man? You all right over there? I'm doing amazing. Happy to be here. All right, man. Before we go any further in this final s- segment of this show, it is being brought to you by Fork Talk. Fork Talk Eatery. In case you haven't had a home-cooked meal in a long time, looking for ribs, chicken, and all the fixings, well, Fork Talk has got it. They will have your mouth smacking and your fork talking. Give them a call at 469-358-5241 or go to their Instagram page at Fork Fork Talk 3000 (laughs) or Facebook Fork Talk and place your order today. Fork Talk Eatery. It is hashtag Fork and delicious. And speaking of uh, Fork Talk, uh, th- this actual you know, these guys are actually joining me on the BGC Sports Fork Talk Eatery Sports Hotline, where the food is. Hashtag Fork and Delicious. All right. So again, in the second segment, we kind of talked about the NBA season and the rumblings that are going on with the season rebeginning, and uh, we're all in agreement that the that they should put in a plan as far as the play goes, with uh, maybe one week of regular season games. And then go straight to the playoffs. We were all in agreement with that. And we also talked about our MVP candidates. We all had, well, Corey had Luka Doncic and uh, Giannis and LeBron. Quest had LeBron. And uh, who did you have, Quest, again? LeBron, Giannis, and who else? Anthony, Anthony Davis. And I also had, uh, you know, I only gave two. But I gave love to Luka Doncic because that kid is amazing what he's been doing with the Mavs this year. So, We're going to move into the further part or the uh, final part of the show, and we're going to talk some NFL. And uh, I mentioned it in the earlier segment or the first segment about uh, when Quest said about um, betting on yourself. And it sounds weirdly familiar to what's going on in Dallas. Well, there's a there's a report 
maybe unconfirmed, but yet the talk is still out there. So you got to think that it's got it's got a little it's got it's, it's going to have a little bit of legs to it. And that is a uh, Dallas Cowboy quarterback Dakota Rain Prescott. You might know him as Dak. Was uh, offered a hundred and seventy five million dollar deal for five years. Uh, they made it clear that they being Dax Cap has made it clear that they only want a four year deal. Corey, these are your boys. You know what? I'm going to come back to you. I'm going to say the best for last because these are your boys. and I want you to be objective if you can. Quest, as a player that has played in this league, who has the most leverage, the Cowboys or Dak? In Dak's situation and the, the moves the Cowboys make, like it's sad to say because I'm really a Dak fan. I like them, but the Cowboys really have the most leverage. And I say that because, I mean, the Cowboys are at their best when they're running the football and they let Dak be a game manager, not a game superhero. When you get Zeke going, you get him going downhill, you give him maybe upwards of 25 carries a game, or just 25 touches in general, like that's when the Cowboys are at their best. Well, I think they struggle more when they let Dak throw the ball around too much. You know, he he throw the ball 40 times and he having these 350 plus yard games. I think they struggle more that way. And um, for me, if if I if I was Jerry Jones, I, f- I feel like Andy Dalton, like he, he's not a slouch. He's not a scrub. He's he's won games. He he's seen the playoffs several times. He haven't won any games in the playoffs, but he's he's been there with a lesser team with, with less weapons. And I feel like. He's more than capable of carrying the team into the playoffs and maybe doing some even greater things with more weapons and more of a reliable running game. Yeah, and and I'm I'm glad you mentioned uh, Andy Dalton in that in that scenario because um, I think he is definitely not a slouch by any stretch of the imagination, and there's a reason why they brought that kid in. Uh, Corey, who has the most leverage, Dak or Dallas, or Dallas or Dak? Uh, I will say Dallas does, and the reason I – well, I'll say before the signing of Andy Dalton, I would have said Dak did. But just as both of y'all said, man, Andy Dalton is not a, a, slouch, a slouch at all. And he's a professional. He's been in the league. He's He knows what he's doing. But he's never really had a tremendous team or tremendous players around him. Maybe he's had one or two. But to have an offensive line and a, and a running back and receivers like Dallas does, he's never had that. So at this point, man, I think they've made a significant offer to Dak. I think it's an offer that's um, well-deserved. I think he does need to be paid. But I think he's shown over these years, especially being a fourth-round pick, he's worked his way up and he's progress- progressively got better every year. No, he hasn't won the playoff games that, that everybody wants him to win, but people say let him go. Okay, you let him go. Who are you going to bring in? Yeah, you have Andy Dalton for a year, and then what happens after that? You can't just go out and find a quarterback. I mean, so honestly, I think I think the Cowboys have the upper hand at this point, and I just think – I know it's going to get done, man. I think what the, the – what he has to July 15th or something like that, to get yeah, a deal done, it's gonna get done. Yeah, that's it's the gonna get done. that's the deadline that you have to sign players under the franchise tag. If you do not sign them by that date, then you cannot negotiate a longer term deal during the season. So, yeah, yeah, I think it's gonna get done, man. And and just looking at how the draft fell and what the Cowboys did, they just gave him more weapons, man. And you tell me one quarterback in the league that wouldn't want what the Cowboys have. Who wouldn't want to get behind that, that center and, and, and be the quarterback of his team, man? There's just too many weapons out there, too much talent for him to not take a deal and, 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 and sit out and, and miss out on the opportunity. Yeah, and should he sign the tender, the franchise tag tender, he's going to make $31 million and some change. And the highest paid quarterback in the league right now is Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. Seattle. And I actually saw a report on Thursday, fellas, that the Chiefs have started <laughs> talking about re- or negotiating an extension for Patrick Mahomes. And I'm not saying that the Patrick Mahomes deal is going to get done before Dak's deal does, because he's already been he's already been granted his fifth year option. So as as 
as Dak has too, but no, no, actually Dak didn't have the fifth year. Well, I, I can't remember the terms of that exactly, but what I'm getting at is that if, 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 if Mahomes signs this deal during the off season and before July 15th and Dak hasn't had a deal in place at that time, he's going to play under the franchise tag. He is going to play under the franchise tag. And, and I would hesitate to even really think that, it would be a firm probability that Dak would even be the Cowboys quarterback next year if it gets that deep and that ugly because we all know Patrick Mahomes is going to command about $45 million a year, at least in my book. What do you think, Quest? Uh, Patrick Mahomes, he's an unbelievable talent. And to me, if I'm the owner of that team, I say, hey, man, here's a blank check. You tell me what you want. Because <laughs> what, what he's done with that franchise, like, granted, they do have a lot of weapons. But that team does not go if Patrick Mahomes is not there. Like what he does, like he he's a magician. And I mean, it just as a defensive back, I wouldn't want to play against a, a, a quarterback with that type of arm talent because no matter how good your coverage is, no matter like what what blitzes you send in your defensive scheme, his his ability to improvise and make big plays is incredible. And the weapons that he had, you can't guard them for long. For too long, because someone is gonna get beat you deep, and it's and it's just how it is. So you have Kareem, or not Kareem Hunt. You have Clyde Edwards Hilaire, the, who they just drafted from LSU, running back. You have the best tight end in the game in Travis Kelsey. You have one of the fastest wide receiver. You have one of the fastest anything period on planet Earth in Tyreek Hill, and Hardman on the other side has blazing speed as well. Um, as a yeah. You guys- Sammy Watkins. Like, Sammy Watkins, who they, they actually re-upped him again this year as well. He took a bit of a pay cut, but that's understandable. But as a as a fan of the Las Vegas Raiders, um, I hate them. I hate the Chiefs. You should. I hate them. Um, but as I said, I believe he's gonna command that amount of money or more. Of course, I wanted to ask you a question. I had this on the on the list. The uh, the hashtag shakedown list. You are the only one of us out of me and Corey that has you know had to deal with these kind of contract negotiations in the NFL and wherever else. Kind of take us a, a little bit behind the curtain somewhat and just kind of explain to the folks out there that may not know a, a little bit how this process works. And then you'll be educating me for sure in the process. I mean, really, communication is usually between you know. For me, you know, I wouldn't know Dak Prescott or no one like that, and um. When I signed my deal with the Kansas City Chiefs, as you know, my agent, I, they brought me in, they looked at me, I did my physical, and it was between them and the Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas just wanted me on, you know, a normal four-year player deal. But what the Chiefs did, they they brought me in, they liked what they saw, and they gave me a lot of incentives. They gave me an incentive for a roster bonus. They gave me an incentive to come work out. And, and you know, it's really a, just a, a lot of back-and-forth stuff, you know, it's, if you don't want this, then you tell them, hey, I don't want to be have to come to the workouts. If they want you to be at the workouts to build team camaraderie, they have put this in there where if you be at your workout, you have this escalator and things like that. And a lot of people do a lot of the uh, performance uh, incentives, which if I make a Pro Bowl, I get an extra million dollars. Or if I'm first team all pro, I get an extra three million dollars, which all that is really cool. But. Really, as a player, what it's all boiled down to is the guarantee money. I don't care if if you give me a contract for five years, ninety five means. If I only got forty million guaranteed, then I don't want that deal. Uh, like I'd rather take a, a deal for three years worth thirty five million and thirty guaranteed, or or twenty five guaranteed, or some some of, of that nature. If that makes any sense. Yeah. It does make sense. Uh, Corey, d- what, what do you think about what Quest just said? Is that how you thought it worked out, or did you think it was a little bit more strenuous than that, or what? No, I, I pretty much thought that's how it worked out, man. I know a lot of um, players uh, do take incentive-type deals, uh, such as um, Andy Dalton. I know he has incentives in his contract. Uh, Alden Smith, who just got reinstated, has a lot of incentives in his contract. I think he can make up to 3 or $4 million on his contract. But there's certain parameters that 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 he has to hit in order to get that. A lot of them he's don't not get, gonna make. Don't get drunk. <laughs> a lot of them he's not gonna make. Yeah. Uh, so I agree with him, man. I'd rather take the short-term deal and make more money than the long-term deal 
that with you getting a $95 million contract, but only $40 million is guaranteed, for all them, all them years, you you wasting time and you wasting money. So I, I would have to agree with that. And and on, on top of that, with once your guarantee money runs out, you just I mean you're sacrificing any time. If you can have an amazing year, but uh, we see these guys want to make a move in franchise, they can just cut you just just because oh we got to pay you this amount of money. It might have not have anything to do with your play. So that's that's why you know you see a lot of guys going back into with uh, what's your guarantee money. And that also may be another reason why Dak may not sign, sign that deal yet. Maybe the guarantee money isn't right. I mean, I really – I got to look at the figures and just really find out all the details about it because that could be a, a major factor on why he hasn't got that done, that deal done yet. Man, that's good stuff, man. Um, we got about a minute and a half left to go in the show. Uh, I want to take a couple of minutes to shout out uh, <laughs> my nephew, but he's really not my nephew. I'm talking about – safety or actually defensive back Jonathan McGill from Coppell High School. I covered him all throughout high school. He's now at Stanford doing big things with the Cardinal in the Pac-12. And he was actually awarded freshman of the year uh, for uh, for the Stanford football team, the Cardinal. And there was a, an, an amazing read about him and how he's handling the adjustments with the COVID-19 and being able to be or having to be at home to do school and all of that. So he basically just kind of outlined his day. And what he has to do, he has class during the day. He has three workouts, he ha- workouts that he has to do. Um, and it, it's all virtual. So I'm sure they're, they're finding a way where they have to check in with that. But I just wanted to show him some love, man. I, I, I want to get him his, get him and his parents on the podcast uh, real soon. Uh, but we'll see how that goes, man. So we got about 40 seconds left to go, man. I'm going to get some final thoughts from each of y'all uh, about this uh, inaugural broadcast with us three. Corey, go ahead, man. Man, I just want to say, man, I'm so happy and so excited, man, that you uh, decided to bring me on. Uh, just quickly, seeing your quickly, growth. Quickly, quickly. Just seeing your growth, man, uh, over the years. Like I said, 20 years, man, you've come a long way, brother, and I'm proud of you, and I'm proud to be a part of it. I appreciate it. Quest, real quick, go ahead, man. Real I'm quick. Just, I'm just blessed to be a part of, you know, like we talked in the barbershop, you told me about it, and there's something that I've just been grateful to be a part of, and I'm glad you brought me aboard. Thank you so much. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the Shake Back Sports Show. For Big Day, the dopest engineer in the game, Marquess and Huff, Corey Ellison, Willie Epstein Jr., my big homie, Donald Ware from Press Box to Press Row is up next. Y'all love each other, take care of each other, hug each other. We out. We'll holler at y'all again real soon. Peace. Peace. Good stuff, man. Um, uh, hold on a second. Hold on. Let me see. I got to be able to play it back. And we welcome you back to the Shake Back Sports Show right here on the Big Game Christian Sports Network. To the dopest engineer on the cut, we're done. We can do the, uh, yeah, we can do the, because uh, I, I want to get Mike on too, man, because with the podcast about telling our Shake Back stories, um, we're not really confined to any time limit on that. So I want to get wait till we get him on. I'm going to have to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can stop by the, by, by the barbershop tomorrow and see if I can see what's going on with his phone, and then tell him that that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to send this all to Big Day, man, and uh, it'll be available on podcast, not until probably Monday, but if y'all want to listen to it on the weekend, I mean, we encourage that too because we need to build, keep those ratings up on the weekend. So I appreciate it, fellas. It's going to be fun, man, going forward. Most sure. definitely. All right, man. I'll holler at y'all later. All right. All right, bro. I'll all take right. it easy. All right.